Close your eyes for a moment and let your mind drift back to a time when the world was bathed in the soft, nostalgic glow of 1970s television. Picture yourself, a wide-eyed child or perhaps a teenager, eagerly perched in front of the TV screen. Your imagination set free to explore the realms of fantasy. It was a time when the Beatles-inspired musical magic met the whimsical world of insects, giving birth to a show that would forever etch itself into the corridors of your memory, the Bugaloos. Oh, those Bugaloos. Can you recall the first time you stumbled upon this delightful series? Perhaps it was during a lazy Saturday morning, the aroma of pancakes wafting through the air as you huddled on the living room floor, entranced by the musical escapades of joy, IQ harmony, and courage. Or maybe it was a rainy afternoon when the Bugaloo's treehouse adventures whisked you away to the most enchanting of places, far from the ordinary world. The Bugaloo's danced their way into our hearts, their catchy tunes echoing in our minds long after the screen faded to black. But did you know that behind the scenes, the show was a playground of fascinating facts? Let's journey together into the world of the Bugaloo's. Did you ever wonder about the talented minds who gave life to this whimsical world? The show was created by Sid and Marty Croft, visionaries who sculpted surreal landscapes with a dash of psychedelic flair. They introduced us to the magical world of Tranquility Forest, where the Bugaloos resided in their treetop sanctuary. And let's not forget the delightful characters like Benita Bazaar, the fabulously flamboyant villainess who tried her best to outshine the Bugaloos with her outlandish schemes. Ah, those were the days, weren't they? The Bugaloos, with their infectious songs and whimsical adventures, carved out a special place in the annals of television history. So, as we take a moment to reminisce about our first encounter with the Bugaloos and the magical moments it gifted us, let's also dive deeper into the fascinating world that brought this beloved series to life. Prepare to be amazed by the hidden treasures and captivating tales of creativity that made the Bugaloos a cherished memory. In 1970, The Bugaloos took flight as a TV series that captured the hearts of many. However, it's worth noting that there isn't substantial information available about the ideas you mentioned regarding The Bugaloos and its connections to Animaniacs, or the stalled film with Hansen. Therefore, let's delve into an interesting tidbit about The Bugaloos. Did you know that for the flying sequences in The Bugaloos, the actors had to be strapped into standard harnesses hidden under their pants? It worked well for the boys, but posed a challenge for Joy, as she wore a skirt. To overcome this obstacle, Caroline Ellis, who portrayed Joy, had to learn to balance herself on a precarious swing like flying rig. It's a testament to the creative problem-solving required to bring this whimsical show to life. The Bugaloos may have had its quirks, but it's these behind-the-scenes stories that add to its charm and legacy in the world of classic television. Billy Barty's drumming talent in The Bugaloos in the 1970 TV series The Bugaloos. Actor Billy Barty showcased his drumming skills, a talent he honed in the 1930s during his vaudeville act with his sisters. Barty's drumming ability proved to be valuable for the show, where he frequently took up the drumsticks. Billy Barty's early experience in vaudeville laid the foundation for his drumming expertise, adding a unique dimension to his character in The Bugaloos. His rhythmic contributions added flair to the musical elements of the series, which was integral to its appeal. Barty's drumming in The Bugaloos remains a noteworthy aspect of his career, demonstrating how his early training in the world of entertainment continued to influence his work in the 1970s. The Bugaloos, unseen villains in the transition to videotape production in the world of 1970s television, The Bugaloos emerged as a whimsical and beloved series, known for its enchanting characters and catchy tunes. However, behind the scenes, there were interesting details that didn't make it to the screen. Due to budget constraints, the show's creators had grand plans for different towns and villains that never saw the light of day. One unexplored locale was the Super Square, a town inhabited by square-shaped people who lived in square-shaped houses with square-shaped pets. Unfortunately, this quirky community remained confined to the drawing board. Similarly, the sinister downtown lair, originally intended to be inhabited by the militant Big Bummer and his general bumblers, along with their marching band, the Moldy Figs and the Old Notes, never became a part of the Bugaloo's world. The chic Vermilion villains were also planned as adversaries for the Bugaloos, but they, too, remained unrealized. 
Adding to the list of intriguing characters was Uncle Emil, a puppeteer who drove around in a yellow bus with the puppets, corncob marionettes that popped apart like popcorn. Sadly, these intriguing additions never made it to the screen due to the constraints of the show's budget. Interestingly, Walker Edmiston, a versatile voice actor, occasionally lent his talent to the character Sparky the Firefly in the series, adding depth and charm to the Bugaloo's world. Moreover, the Bugaloo's holds the distinction of being the second series produced by Sid Croft and Marty Croft, following their earlier creation, H.R. Puffstuff. While H.R. Puffstuff was shot on film, the creators made a significant change for the Bugaloo's by switching to videotape production. This shift was driven by the desire to reduce production costs and to take advantage of the emerging chroma key visual effects technology, which allowed for more vibrant and imaginative settings in the show. In retrospect, The Bugaloos remains a cherished piece of 1970s television, with its unseen towns and villains serving as a testament to the creative ambitions of its makers. Walker Edmiston's contributions and the shift to videotape production marked significant moments in the series' history. Despite its budget constraints and unrealized ideas, The Bugaloos continues to charm audiences with its unique brand of nostalgia. In the making of the 1970 TV series The Bugaloos, the Croft brothers put immense effort into finding the right British youngsters to play the lead roles. They conducted exhaustive auditions and even sought advice from playwright Lionel Bart. Their main focus was on musical abilities, but they overlooked acting capabilities. It became apparent only after shooting began that acting skills were equally important. Another interesting tidbit is that Phil Collins, the renowned musician, was one of the final three contenders for the role of IQ in this children's American television show. Moreover, Martha Ray, known for her role as Boss Witch in Sid and Marty Croft's film Puff Stuff, played a role in The Bugaloos. Despite concerns from Marty Croft about her larger-than-life personality causing problems on set, Sid Croft decided to continue working with her on the series. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the intricate process of casting and the dynamics that shaped the Bugaloos TV series. In 1970, the TV series The Bugaloos took flight, but not without its share of interesting behind-the-scenes stories. One notable anecdote involves Lucille Ball, who was filming Here's Lucy on a nearby set. Ball often visited the Bugaloos set and had a particular fascination with the Bugaloos wings, as John McIndo recalls. While the Bugaloos were signed to Capitol Records, their musical endeavors didn't soar. Their album and the single for a friend failed to achieve success, leading Capitol Records to drop the group from their artist roster in 1971. Creator Sid Croft and star Martha Ray had their own unique inspiration for the series. They frequented a drag club in Miami known as the Jewel Box, where one of their favorite performers went by the name Bibi Bazaar. To entice Ray to join the show, Croft decided to name her character Benita Bazaar. The Bugaloos may not have been a massive hit, but these intriguing tidbits shed light on the show's history and the colorful characters involved in its creation. Bargaining for dreams, the tragic price of exploitative contracts on the Bugaloos cast members in old Hollywood in the early 1970s. The TV series The Bugaloos captured the hearts of viewers with its whimsical world and memorable characters. However, behind the scenes, a darker story was unfolding one that exposed the harsh realities of the entertainment industry in old Hollywood. Many of the Bugaloo's cast members, despite their talent and potential, found themselves ensnared in exploitative contracts that dictated their careers and finances. The allure of stardom often led young and aspiring actors to sign agreements that gave them little control over their own destinies. These contracts, crafted by shrewd industry professionals, bound the cast members to grueling schedules, meager pay, and limited creative freedom. For some, the promise of fame quickly turned into a nightmare as they struggled to make ends meet while their talents were exploited for profit. Tragically, some cast members faced the devastating consequences of these oppressive contracts. Financial hardships, coupled with the pressures of fame, took a toll on their mental and emotional well-being. The dream of Hollywood's success came at an unbearable cost. While the Bugaloos may have portrayed a whimsical world on screen, the lives of its cast members were far from enchanting. Exploitative contracts left lasting scars on their careers 
and personal lives, serving as a stark reminder of the pitfalls of the entertainment industry in that era. As we remember the Bugaloos for its charm and nostalgia, it's essential to also recognize the hidden struggles that plagued its cast members. Their stories serve as a cautionary tale about the need for fair and equitable treatment of talent in the world of entertainment. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the whimsical world of the Bugaloos, I invite you to take a moment to delve into the recesses of your memory and unearth the treasures that this iconic 1970 TV series may have left behind. It's more than just a show, it's a portal to a bygone hero of fantasy and music, where enchantment and melodies danced hand in hand. Perhaps you recall the catchy tunes that lingered in your mind, or the endearing characters like Joy, Harmony, IQ, Courage, and the mischievous Benita Bazaar, who added a dash of hilarity to every episode. Maybe you found solace in the Bugaloo's camaraderie or admired their resilience in the face of adversity. Or perhaps it was the vividly painted landscape of Tranquility Forest that left an indelible mark on your imagination. In the world of the Bugaloo's, possibilities were boundless, dreams were tangible, and friendships were unbreakable. It was a place where fantasy met reality, and where the power of music could conquer even the most outlandish challenges. Now, I encourage you to share your cherished memories and thoughts about this classic show with fellow fans and newcomers alike. What made the Bugaloos special for you? What life lessons did you glean from their adventures? And in this age of nostalgia, how does this series continue to resonate with you? Thank you for embarking on this nostalgic journey with us, for allowing the Bugaloos to flutter their wings in your hearts once more. Your thoughts and memories are like precious gems, each reflecting the enduring magic of this timeless series. Keep the Bugaloos spirit alive in your hearts, and may the melodies of Tranquility Forest forever serenade your dreams. Until we meet again on another nostalgic adventure, take care and cherish the memories of the Bugaloos. With heartfelt appreciation,